Welcome, fellow masters, to the first anime review of Fate Extra on Kaudia Gurus here. As you know, I am Musaki, sitting here with the wonderful Sloan, the female otaku. How are you doing? I am so excited. Sup, everyone. I'm your female otaku, and I'm from Sloan, the female otaku. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> I do, uh, I do uh, discussion videos and uh, ranking videos, AMV seasonally, and, of course, streaming FGO. Mm-hmm epic streaming as well. I sit in a lot of her streams and she has a lot of fun and it's great. It's going to be a great time. So, getting right into it. Fade Extra Last Encore. I <laughs> Shaft, you blew this out of the water. <laughs> Good job. Oh my gosh. I don't even I haven't even played Fate Extra, mm -hmm. but oh my gosh, I was still like blown away by this because mainly cuz it's Shaft and Shaft is like honestly one of my favorite anime studios period. Mm -hmm. So I was just blown away by the animation because it's actually been a while since Shaft last animated something action-wise. They've mm -hmm. been doing a lot more dramas recently right. with actually what's currently airing right now, season two of March Comes in Like a Lion. So I wasn't too sure if they'd have the budget for an action series, mm -hmm. but I guess they profited well from the Kizumonogatari uh, movies. Oh, so oh, yeah. everything looks nice. It, it looks very fluid. I mean, I mean, just going right back, right off of it. I mean, it kind of start opens up with, um, not sure if you know this, but that is the female protagonist from Fate Extra, and Nero taking on a godlike being, <laughs> and it it's, it starts off really epic. I was not expecting it to start off with an action scene. Oh, so that's who that uh, girl was in the beginning who was dying. She's supposed she was like the original protagonist or something in the um, games. Um, in the game, you can choose to be a male or female, and that is the female protagonist. Oh. So like, if you see like on Fate Grand Order in uh, the Craft Essence, another ending, that's her on that Craft. Really? Essence. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So that so was. Does that mean the guy mm -hmm. in the other version is uh, Hakuno? Yes. Oh, wow. Victor of the Moon, that's what it's called. Yep, Victor, Victor of the, the Moon, Craft Essence. Yep, so that's oh. him. And it just opens up. Nero gets bodied by a god, and it's kind of sad. I didn't expect the graphic. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. They, they get real detail on how people get blown apart. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh, no. Right, so that happens, and she, like, literally gets destroyed. And Hakuno is being deleted. So in... In extra, when you die, when you lose a fight, that's how you pretty much look. Your body slowly disintegrates. Yeah, like, when I was watching the episode, I started to get more and more clues as to this was, like, a simulation. And yeah. then they started saying how now there's going to be a purge of, like, the NPCs, and we're only going to, like, protect, like, the master candidates or something like that. One of them being Shinji. Of course Shinji has to be here. Of course Shinji's <sighs> in here. And it, it kind of surprised me, because he's in here, and I'm like, all right, I know how he is in, in the game. Whatever. He's a lot nicer in the beginning. He kind of lulls you into this false sense of security. Like, I knew he was going to be a scumbag. I always know, because it's Shinji. And what do you know? He shanks Hakuno. <laughs> like, like oh really bad. Like, in the front and then, like, six times in the back. Like, God, okay. He's he's already dead. <laughs> oh, my God. And how, honestly, how did Shinji get a girlfriend? Right? Wow. And she looks like Tamamo, too, with the pink hair and the <laughs> eyes. I'm like, hmm, is that Tamamo in disguise? I don't know. Oh boy. Uh, but yeah, that girl, that girlfriend's probably dead. Just... Yeah, probably because we didn't <laughs> see her anymore. So, but here's the thing though: she was one of the few characters that actually had colored hair. That mm -hmm. and another guy that we saw called Leo, oh, who yeah. killed someone at chess. <laughs> yeah, people die when they play chess. It is normal, apparently. Like, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> that was not in the game. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So people other people to take note of, we saw Sakura. Yep. She was like a nurse and she actually looked more like Bibi in this one cuz she had long hair. Mhm. Mm I was like, "Oh, this is weird." What yes. Is this? Super long hair and apparently when you get when you die in chess, you get sent to the infirmary along with all the other people and it's like, "Oh, that's like a morgue." Yeah, exactly. And Rin was there too, and they were all like telling Hakuno, like, okay, can you just take this guy over to the burial? So he goes over to the incinerator, and I'm just like, this school has a freaking incinerator. 
that what? people apparently kill themselves in. It's like, oh yeah, don't go to incinerator. People have committed suicide. Their reason lost a flame. It's like, what? What? <laughs> okay, that's a little. Yeah. They threw that away in the beginning, but um, the Rin is acting very distant. She's like, oh, okay, that's how you're gonna respond. He's nothing but data anyway. Blah blah blah. Yakety smackety. I'm Rin. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to understand this universe because at the end, if you guys watched past the end credits, you saw Kide, who did mm-hmm. not say Yorokube Shonen. I was waiting for that. He did <laughs> not say that. <laughs> he starts talking about how like I have to te- keep like Hakuno alive because he's like gonna be like my last project or something like that. It's like my final thing before I die or whatever. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, what the heck, Kide? What are you talking about? And then he vanishes, and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I don't understand what's going on, but. Apparently the school is just for creating masters or something. Mm -hmm. It pretty much selects anyone on the Earth. Because in this world, the Earth is pretty much uh, a wasteland and bathed in flames. So when Hakuno dropped that uh, body and it disintegrated, he saw Earth. That wasn't fake. That was just what's going on in reality right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hakuno was a little odd. Yeah, Actually. he was he was saying how I hate this moon cell and everything. It feels like, I'm not sure, because this wasn't in the game, but it feels like this has happened to him before. Yeah, uh-huh, definitely. Especially the way Nero, oh, okay, spoilers, obviously. Nero obviously makes his appearance in here, but mm-hmm. the first thing that she says when she sees him is like, ah, it's you. Mm-hmm. Like, she knows who he is. It's like, okay, so they've done this before, maybe? It was strange because we saw like a flashback in the beginning of the episode with Hakuno saying how like he's filled with like revenge and like hate and violence and stuff. And then we see all this blood around him and students being dead and stuff. And I'm just like, what the heck is this guy? (laughs) But he's already more interesting than Shiro, so. (laughs) Definitely. Uh, Yeah. Like, I definitely like that aspect of him. And he's taken a lot of punishment. I mean, he got stabbed like seven times, <laughs> oh my God. fell off of whatever, and then, like, gets shot in the side by a fake Emiya. Yeah! Like, that That also took me by surprise. I was like, okay, they just, I guess they threw that little cameo in there. Emiya's here, and he almost killed the protagonist. Because <laughs> Emiya's just a, like, wait, where is the real protagonist. I mean, I was waiting for Shiro, but Shiro's not there. It's Hakuno. You know. I guess I'll kill you instead. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna die. And another thing, um, if you've seen uh, the guy on the fragment of 2030 Craft Essence, yes. uh, he shows up behind Hakuno as he, before he throws, after he throws the body down in the incinerator. So oh, that was him! That was him. Oh. Um, he'll have major importance later, but he pretty much is saying, look, you're running out of time. You're not gonna... All the masters are nearly selected, so it's like you're too late again. That's another thing. Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. kept saying again, like, when all of the NPCs started dying. <laughs> like, so, okay, so these people are trapped in the loop, and if they don't realize they're in the loop, they just get they get knocked off, I guess. Yeah. So, that, that kind of sucks, because... <laughs> The vicious way people were dying, like the little stone doll thing for stabbing people, decapitating people, blowing people's heads off. and You didn't see it, but you saw the shadows and the blood splatters, so you can kind of, your imagination goes from there. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, um, a lot of, it's a lot of Shaft-like scenes, like Mm -hmm. when... He said uh, toward when he was kind of walking toward the sword because when he falls into the incinerator, he doesn't fall like into what you would think incinerator looked like. It looks like the theater that Nero's noble phantasm yes. is in, but it's all like old and stuff. And it's like, look, I don't, I need this sword. A hero died standing and fighting, so I need it. But it switches to like this very stylized shot that kind of looked like Devil Man a little bit. So nice try, baby. But he's like, I need to destroy everyone in this moon cell. Like I hate this moon cell. <laughs> um, and I was like, I, it was a couple shots like that. Like, yep, shaft, shaft, fingerprints all over it. <laughs> oh yeah, like when they're walking, and then you just see like quick sudden close ups of people talking, and then it goes back out to them walking again. That happened a lot actually between mm. Shinji and Hakuno when they were walking together. Yep. So I'm just the- like that classic shaft, you. And the colors, too. Like, when mm-hmm. uh, Hakuno got the headache and the colors inverted in the infirmary mm-hmm. to, like, a darker red or purple. And it, like, it kind of gives you the uneasy feeling, like, yeah, this is not normal. Yep. Not normal. But let's talk about Nero. <sighs> <All right. gasps> 
gosh, to see you. <laughs> so good. Oh, it's so great to see you just animated and everything. And and like, oh my god. So smooth. So, like, she gets summoned as soon as Hakuno pulls the sword, which mm -hmm. it, the animation kind of looked like from the first PV or one of the first few PVs that came out. But she comes out, super epic nonchalantly grabs the sword and mm. is like, alright, Amia, let's go to town. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Like, <laughs> so true. That's exactly what happened. It's like, alright, boom, boom. I'm coming at you. Now, one strike. One strike! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Don't mess with Nero. She's ready to go down. Mm-hmm. And... I just... I just cannot wait till we get our first Umu. Oh, man. <sighs> that was great. Like... And then, like, the line she tells you, that is the line she says in the game when you choose her. Because in the game, you can choose between Emiya, Nero, and Tamamo. Really? And okay. When, and when she appears for you, she asks you that same question. Like, hey, are you my master? In that fashion. Like, I was like, alright. I like all the nods to the game, but it is not exactly like it. And I like that. I, I was worried that they were just going to kind of copy-paste it. Like, all right, just animate the game, whatever. But they actually are take some interesting routes. And, okay. And uh, at the end, Kire, uh, he is, he was like the arbiter of the of the wars or whatever of the Grail mm -hmm. Wars, like, except he wasn't evil. It's, it was really okay. weird. It was one of the huh. rare moments where he wasn't a bad guy. Like okay. he legit tried to help you. He just kind of told you how it was. Like, look, do this before this day, or you're gonna get, you're gonna get dead. That's about it. Oh, all right. So we'll, we'll see more. I'm excited, honestly. I want to see more. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. I don't know much about Fate Extra. All I know is uh, a few of the servants that are going to come up, but I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who's, like, absolutely clueless and doesn't mm. know anything about Fate Extra. Now, yep. would you say that someone who doesn't know anything about Fate can get into Fate Extra? I uh, this anime for sure and even the game like regardless both of them if you're a fan of fate or even if you're new to fate you can watch this and be all for it if you're if you're a fate fan you're like oh hey that's Rin. what are you doing here shinji looks kind of weird blah 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 there's a lot of stuff like that mm -hmm. um i like that they didn't really require you to know the game in order to get everything that's going on mm-hmm so, yeah, definitely. If you never play Fate Extra, you're always curious, but you know you don't have a PSP or you don't can't get it from PlayStation or Steam or whatever, watch this anime. You will enjoy the characters, know the characters, and if you play Fate Grand Order, you might uh, <laughs> recognize some servants, as, yes. uh, as Sloan mentioned earlier. That'll be, that'll be fun. Oh, man. I want another one. Can we have another yes. one? <laughs> this is going to be great, and I hope you guys are excited for more. Mm-hmm. That's right. So it's going to about wrap it up for this kind of review. Really excited. It looks really good. Can't wait for the next one. We're going to try and um, do this next week again. Uh, Netflix does say they're going to start subbing um, something in a simulcasting. I'm not sure if it's in America or which state it is, but there's a yeah. simulcasting on the 30th. So we'll see from there, but we'll catch you next time. Uh, Sloan, where can they find you? What's your social media? Lay it down on us. Oh, okay. So, uh, besides subscribing to my YouTube channel, which you can click in the link in the description below to do so, mm -hmm. you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm really active on there. Uh, Twitter is Sloan the Otaku. And you can follow me on Instagram for a cosplay. I am currently doing a Skahak cosplay and also 2B from Nier Automata. So you can follow me there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. You can follow me there at Sloan the Female Otaku. And I'm also on Snapchat at Sloan the Otaku. And uh, yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, so definitely follow this wonderful human being. And as always, fellow masters, I'm Musaki from Kadia Gurus. We'll see you next time. Sayonara. Thank you.